my dear brothers and sisters in today's world people like to ask for proof or people need proof before they are convinced so what is the proof that jesus rose from the dead scripture scholars have given us three proofs that jesus rose from the dead the first one is the empty tomb and we see in today's gospel how they went to the tomb and it was empty but of course someone could say oh that doesn't mean he has risen they could have stolen the body and someone already said that the chief priests and pharisees bribed the soldiers and said if anyone asks you say that the disciples came and stole the body in the night but the second proof is more stronger the fact that jesus appeared to so many different people at different times it was not that jesus appeared only to a disciple he even appeared to women and in those days the testimony of women was not valid and therefore if the authors of the gospel are writing that he appeared to women then he must really have appeared to women and a host of other people but the third most important proof is the radical change in the behavior of the apostles we know that when jesus was crucified they were scared they all went and locked themselves up in the room they didn't know what to do and suddenly these same scared people do an about turn 180 degrees turn and they become full of life and they're not scared they go out into the street proclaiming that jesus has risen of course ultimately jesus' resurrection is an article of faith no amount of proof will suffice for those who do not want to believe when we are reading the gospel narratives after the resurrection there is the uh, story about mary going to the tomb and this is in john's gospel and there she sees jesus but it's like the res it's the resurrection of jesus and so she cannot really recognize him and she thinks he is the gardener till jesus says mary and then a response is raboni and she wants to go and hug jesus and jesus says do not cling to me i want to connect this point to my homily on good friday where i say spoke of the valleys that we are going through and the persecution that we may be experiencing the frustration the disappointments all that is part of our human existence and there i mentioned that we need to go through a valley in order to reach the peak the next mountain we have to also pray for whatever it is that we are asking god for and we have to believe in faith that god is going to give it to us jesus said if your faith was as sm small as a mustard seed only this much faith you can move mountains and that is the faith that god invites us to so whatever difficulties problems health issue finances difficulty at work relationships we can pray 
for the better outcome and the good outcome. Whatever it is you're seeking, are you seeking a new job? Are you seeking better finances? Whatever it is that you are seeking, you have to pray with faith. But after you've made your prayers with faith, and while you are in the waiting period, that is the time when Jesus' words come to mind. Do not cling to me. So do not cling to the outcome that you are expecting. We cling to Jesus, of course, but we do not cling to the outcome. Very often when we are praying, we think of the outcome and we want it that way only. Lord, give it to me in exactly that manner and at exactly this time. God will answer our prayers, but in his time, not just because we think we need it now and we need it right here. And therefore, we are called to patience. Patience is faith in slow motion. So we are invited, while we do pray, we are invited to be patient. And we have to carry on and persevere in our prayer. But not with anxiety, not with, oh, when is this going to happen? But with patience and finally with peace. Yes, we have prayed, we've done all humanly possible. Because remember, I had said our actions have to match our faith. We cannot say I have faith. And then I go and sit down on the couch and do nothing. We are called to put actions to our faith. But once we've done all that, we now let the outcome be to God. Because we are such controlling natures, we want to control even the outcomes. But God knows what is best in his bigger plan. When I was young, I was wanting to be in a beat group or a band. And my dad would not allow me. He said, no, you finish your college and then you can join a beat group or a band. And of course, I was pretty stubborn as a teenager and I kept saying, no, I want to do it now. And he kept insisting, finish your studies first. And right enough, towards the last year, I didn't join a beat group, but I got involved in Broadway theater in Mumbai. And I was doing not only playing the piano, which I would have done in a band, but I was playing, I was singing, I was acting, I was dancing. So I had one thing in mind, but God used my talents at a much broader level. And I was working under the topmost directors in Bombay, Alec Padamsi, Sharon Prabhakar, and we traveled all over the country. And I realized I was wanting to just be in a band and play, but here God had a bigger plan for me. Another example I'd like to give is that of my father. Today is his birthday, 3rd of April. He would have been 96 years old. But all of you all know him. Most of you all know him and have met him. So he was dead against me joining the priesthood. After my graduation, when I told him, he said, nothing doing. Today, a graduation is worth nothing. You do your master's degree and then I'll give you my blessings. And we fought and fought over six months. In fact, he went to the provincial and said, if you take my son, he is my eldest son and he is my only son. I will sue you. The provincial got frightened and then came to me and said, not frightened, but he said, Roy, I think he's not ready to let you go. Why don't you finish your master's and then you come? That's what he wants. And he needs time because I got my vocation suddenly towards the end of my graduation. So he was not prepared for it. And further, he was retiring that very year. So he had made a lot of his retirement plans based on me helping him. 
So anyway, I finished my masters and I carried on my theater. And then at the end, towards the end, I went to him, okay, daddy, you wanted me to do the masters. I finished it. Now, please give me your blessings. And he tells me, son, you know, nowadays, the master's degree is also become worthless because there are so many masters. You do your PhD and then I'll give you my blessings. But by then I was already 21. And so technically I could now leave the house without his permission. And that is what I had to do because he refused to give me his blessings. And the month that I was, uh, when I was supposed to join the novitiate, he went off to Goa and didn't show himself. So I had to join and I was feeling bad. But three months later, when I got my master MSc results and I got a first class, that's the time the ice broke. He just wrote two words, congratulations, daddy, and sent a cake to the novitiate. And my heart was revealed. Slowly he's coming. And it took a lot of time, but he wanted the PhD, I didn't do the PhD that time. But much later, as you know, I came to Boston to do my PhD and that's where I met over 60% of all of you who are on screen now from Boston. And those beautiful five years where I was with y'all. And y'all know that he came for my graduation, May 2011, exactly 10 years back at the age of 86, traveled alone in the plane using the wheelchair. And he came and he was so happy. Of course, I'm, I was not going to let that go. So I teased him, dad, you wanted me to do my PhD in India. If that was the case, if I had done it long time back, you wouldn't have got a chance to come to America. So for my dad too, he wanted a PhD. God granted him his wish, but not as he wanted. So therefore, remember, we pray. We, what is it that we want? We keep our dreams. But we have peace underneath. And this peace can only be given by the risen Lord. And so I'm going to end my homily with this beautiful hymn. No one can give to me that peace, which my risen Lord, my risen King can give. When I look around and see all the things that threaten me, and I seem to lose my peace in a world that's not at ease, no one can give to me that peace, which my risen Lord, my risen king can give says my risen lord to me this the peace i give to you not the peace the world gives but a peace that will set one free i invite you take whatever problem you are facing and say lord i surrender to you give me the peace of the risen christ okay so let's see if i can <clears throat> Can you all see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Just give me the thumbs up, Stephen, if you can hear the piece, okay?
Easter. 